trouble day for Tswane. Disgruntled university students took their grievances to the union buildings and the higher education department, not happy with a new direct payment system that's been introduced by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NISFAS. They say that the system is absolutely full of glitches and many of them have been unfairly defunded from the student payment system. Our reporter Pulele Tweety Jones has been on that story, joining me in studio now. So, Pulele, it's been quite a rough day in the, in the capital. Um, why were the students out on the streets? Yep. Well, firstly, it's about essentially two things. Uh, one that has to do with the issue of direct payments, and the other would ha which, which has to do with the issue of students being defunded due to various reasons, one of which could be because they misrepresented their details when applying for the National uh, Student Funding Aid Scheme as well. So NASFAS has embarked on the process of saying it wants to ensure that there's accountability and that there's transparency, one of which is that they are going to universities and you know, verifying with the information just to see whether um, all the applications were vetted properly, they were going through, they've gone through rigorous processes, and that a student is eligible to actually get the financial aid. Um, but students are saying this is just um, some sort of an excuse from NASFAS not to actually fund more students as well. Um, but also, then there's the issue of the direct payment in which NASFAS is saying it's trying to ensure that there isn't any fraudulent activity that are happening, that there's transparency, that money is paid directly into the accounts of these students. Um, but the students are saying this you know, new system has technical glitches, um, the payments are delayed, secondly, and that thirdly as well, um, there isn't any form of accountability as sometimes it can reflect on the system that they've been paid, but once they go to a store to try purchase something, the money, the, the card declines, the money does not, um, you know, come out. Why yet. are they on the streets? I mean, because these sound like potentially quite legitimate concerns. Surely if you go into NISVAS and say this is the problem, oh, yes, we've got a technical error, let's sort mm. it out. Why, why has it had to spill out onto the streets? Do, did you get an understanding of that from Yes, today? well, most of them who are coming as far as the University of Limpopo and Bumalanga are saying they haven't been paid for about two months. Wow. And therefore, they are starving. They don't have a food, they cannot concentrate in class, and they feel as though their you know, grievances haven't been heard. I mean, NASFAS said that it was communicating with various universities to say um, it will you know, ensure that this process does not inconvenience many of these students. But to date, it seems as though it's a troublesome process, and students are really saying that something must be done about this. Let's just listen to one student from the University of Technology, what he had to say. We are here to demand the attention of the Minister of Education, Dr. Platon Zimande, precisely because we've been trying to get his attention for the past two months. I think students have been raising genuine concerns that it can't be business as usual when uh, scores of our students are home hungry and they've not received the allowances on time. A company was appointed to facilitate money of the poor and the vulnerable called Izaga. We've done our research. The company is fallacious. Uh, look, it suffers a lot of technical uh, glitches, technical difficulties, making it prohibitive for our students to receive their allowances on time. And I think one of the, the concerns that students have, have raised is, is the, the exorbitant charges that students must pay for. Like, look, we fail to understand that why would NES first opt to, you know, uh, choose a bank, a financial bank that is so expensive. So I hear that here to demand the attention of the minister precisely because it can't be business usual when students are here hungry and men are home and have not received their allowances. Mm, I mean, that's really worrying. Actually. Concerns, yeah. So, so these students are saying that there's this payment system, Izaka? Yeah, so basically what happens is that NASFAS would pay to Izaka, Izaka then pays to the students. There's about four companies, I believe, that were appointed. But now the students are saying they're incurring charges, even when the money does reflect that's on their fair. accounts, which is quite something yeah, that, that sounds, they are that really, really awful. upset about. Yeah. Um, so NISVAS is sort of saying, yeah, they're trying to sort it out, etc. And you've mentioned what NISVAS is saying. Yeah. Any response from the higher education department at all? Well, we spoke to them. They're basically saying that um, they're still waiting to meet with the students. Um, I think I spoke to Ishmael Nisi, who's the spokesperson yeah. um, of, of the Department of Higher Education and Training and Learning, but he also said that the minister will not be able to um, see these students because he's quite busy with engagements that are related to um, 
bricks as well. And if I can just read this message for you, what he said was that um, the minister is currently preparing for the DSI BRICS summit in Kabecha in the Eastern Cape. However, arrangements are made for the uh, departments of higher education and training officials to receive the memorandum. And we're being told that they could not receive this memorandum today because they threatened violence to the DHET mm. staff members of the public who were not part of the protest. Well, well speaking of which, I mean, you got hit on the head. What on yeah. earth happened and who hit you? No, I, I really couldn't see what was happening earlier on when we were covering because really, um, you know, what meant to be a very peaceful picket outside the department, the departmental um, officers, turned violent. There was a clash between the police and the students and um, at some point just that interview you were listening to when I got off air, when I was about to get off air I just, you know, I don't know what was going on behind me and that actual incident actually happened and we couldn't see but we managed to cover up for safety and was it was it away. a deliberate do you think we're just getting pushed around because you were close yeah. to the crowd or do you think it was a, a deliberate attack on you as a member of the media well you know the, the, the thing is um, when we were actually there we we managed to see that there were some students who were intoxicated as well okay. uh, not in a sober state of mind so while we're doing the interview some were saying we should actually move from being there or covering the story okay. and that they want to raise their genuine concerns and it was a bit of a scuffle and really it didn't end quite well with the police actually now dispersing you know stun Are grenades students, and rubber bullets as well. Yeah it doesn't sound pretty at all. Are these students back tomorrow? What's the, what's the, what are they saying? So as far as we're concerned they are saying they will continue. Okay. Um, they're waiting for an official you know, response from the Department of Higher Education and Training um, but they really are you know, to the point that they want to meet the Minister of Higher Education and Training, Baden Zimande, who, by the way, says he cannot meet them for now as he has engagements in the Eastern Cape. Mm. All right, well, let's see where this one goes. Doesn't sound uh, like it was a calm process at all. Thanks so much for bringing us up to speed. That was the uh, city of Pretoria today, and our reporter, Pule Lechwiti-Jones, was there. But